Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. It is time for the massive Fukushima update. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Of all the things that the show does, uh, this is the one I think that most consistently gets viewed uh, by people all over. Uh, before we get into it, uh, the most common complaint, if you will, is that uh, people will oftentimes say that it is my opinion on these things, and it is not my opinion. I have fact cam behind me, as you can see in my Thanksgiving set. Now, why does my Thanksgiving set not look right? <gasps> That's Spookly the Square Pumpkin. If you want to see Christelle's pumpkin, you have to look at the last video. Let's see. What could we do for a Thanksgiving set? Mm, I think we could... Um... Yeah, we could, we could turn now, it Now, as up. she sets up the Thanksgiving set, and we get rid of jokes for the evening, uh, we do actually have serious commentary going on. Now, that is a Thanksgiving set. <coughs> Nothing but the best here at The Correct Views. Um, in all seriousness, and welcome to the show, by the way, um, these aren't opinions. These are facts. These are absolute facts. I show them to you right here on Fact Camp behind me. And I give you the sources, the doctors, the physicists, pretty much everybody who's not tied into the nuke industry is somebody that is saying Fukushima is bad and saying that these elements, these radioactive uh, isotopes, and the uh, poisoning of the environment is terrible. And there's a lot of money to keep these sorts of things hidden from me. How, you might ask? Behind me on fact cam, I'll go ahead and uh, show you some of the pictures of the abandoned Fukushima city while I tell you how. Because, uh, friends, if they tell you exactly how poisoned California is, and trust me, I'm going to be going ahead and uh, telling you how, how bad it's getting over there during the, this report this evening. Um... It matters because it's tied into the food that you eat. And uh, these big corporations, they, they, they don't want to tell you the truth, that you really shouldn't eat anything grown in California. They don't want to tell you that San Francisco is the most poison of the entire West Coast cities from this. Because there's a lot of money to be lost if that kind of information gets out. And yet the science is saying that that is exactly the case. And we're going to get to all that. Uh, again, I'm going to scan through these pictures off and on when I'm doing commentary, and you guys will be able to see them on back camp. This is what nukes bring, okay? This is what they bring. This was somebody's city. This was somebody's town, Fukushima Prefecture. Well, let's see. Let's see how it's doing now. The, uh, let's see the great things that GE brought, and that is who TEPCO is. If you're in a mutual fund and they get money from you, get out of that mutual fund. Uh, E&E &E News. Japan Times, deadly radiation levels detected outside Fukushima containment vessel. Details behind the situation are unknown. Officials unable to grasp location of melted nuclear fuel. And it's impossible to plan for decommissioning. Um, how many of you remember that uh, they said that this was in cold shutdown, remember? Well, if something is in cold shutdown, that does mean that you have control over it and that it's going to be decommissioned in an orderly fashion. Um, it also means that it's not s still spewing radioactivity so bad that it can kill a human being in 45 minutes. Well, that's what's happened here, friends. Listen to this. 9.4 sieverts. If you don't know what that is, that is massive, okay? That's all you need to know. That is a deadly dose. 9.4 sieverts detected outside Fukushima reactor containment vessel. TEPCO said Thursday that radiation levels of up to 9.4 sieverts per hour have been detected outside a reactor containment vessel. Now, for those of you that don't know, the containment vessel is what holds the nuclear fuel in. Um, some of the reactors, they exploded and uh, did what's called a melt out and blew the core all over Japan, all over Tokyo. That's what the black goo was. Um, it's called a melt out. 
the fuel looks like it's in here, but it's likely breached the containment vessel or something because you should not be getting this these kind of levels out of something called a containment vessel. It seems to me the it's common sense. I, I shouldn't be losing anybody here. Uh, people exposed to the maximum radiation dose for some 45 minutes will die. That is not cold shutdown, friends. TEPCO expects decontamination work to take at least one month. Checks conducted on September 4th through the 25th found the extremely high radiation levels of the cell, which accommodates a pipe connected to the containment vessel to the number two reactor. Um, so I guess it's the, the second reactor we're talking about here. Uh, the Japan Times, the other one was the Jill Press. These are October 29th and October 30th. These are brand new. Deadly 9.4 sieverts detected outside reactor 2. The details behind the situation are unknown. The details are always unknown. Did you ever notice that? Um, of course, in August, they went to check the inside of one containment vessel by using a remote control robot. We talked about what happened. The high radiation levels destroyed the robot. That also is an opinion. That happens to be grim fact. They call it an extremely high radiation level. The inability to grasp the details about the melted fuel make it impossible for the utility chart to begin its planned decommissioning of the reactors. In other words, they can't take it apart. It's so deadly. And they can't figure out why it's so deadly because they can't get anything close enough to it to inspect it. Meanwhile, earthquakes continue to happen. Let's remember that, that that's how uh, Japan came to be, right? Well, keep looking behind me, guys. Well, um... If that's how Japan came to be, do you think the earthquakes have suddenly stopped? What do you think caused all of this? Earthquakes. This, this is their city now. And they can't even take this apart or find out why they can't take it apart. That's how poisonous it is. Um, listen to this. This is a, an article that is truly twisted. It, it, it is not what it appears to be. Canadian researcher targeted by hate campaign over Fukushima findings. Basically, this shell worked for the nuclear industry and was trying to say that Fukushima wasn't causing any problems. And some people who are on the correct side of this, such as myself, some people who share my views on this, which are the correct views, death threat of this person and many of you know that's where i draw the line that's not you do not you do not need to go and uh do that because among uh, among any moral issues that could exist in that it makes those of us who have the correct answers and have the ability to warn others which i'm doing here it makes the entire sect of us look like a bunch of idiots a bunch of people you need to be afraid of this is bad but the person that got the threat was so unbelievably wrong. Listen to this. Jay Cola never expected the world of hate he encountered when he began to post scientific information about the impact of the Fukushima accident on the Pacific Ocean. There have been massive die-offs in the Pacific Ocean. There have never seen less life in the Pacific Ocean than they're seeing now. All, not some, all of the tuna is coming out of the Pacific Ocean is poisoned. You can look all of this up by any of the keywords. It's in the sentence I just gave you. I've got like 20 articles here. So, I mean, I, I can't have everything at hand all the time. But search it. Mass die-off, Pacific Ocean. You'll find all kinds of articles. This is Jay Cullen just sort of ignored all that. Um, he got death threats, and after the Japanese nuclear reactor melted down in 11, following an earthquake and tsunami, fears arose that radiation would pollute the Pacific and spread to Canada's west coast. And to address those concerns, which wouldn't go away after the ocean scientists reported low levels, Dr. Cullen started a radionuclide monitoring program. And um, he started looking for quality monitoring equipment or uh, information and couldn't find any. So he equipped himself, I should say, to go ahead and do this. And then tried to say that there was about zero risk to the environment and to North America. Now, this brilliant doctor had his life threatened. 
said the research by Dr. Collin and many other scientists have shown that despite the high levels of contamination in Japan, the levels across the Pacific are so low that they are difficult to detect. Even in Japan, he says, the United Nations Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation have determined doses of ionizing radiation. In other words, this bonehead has made two classic mistakes. First of all, and regular listeners, please bear with me. I, I have to do this to explain it. There are three kinds of radiation, gamma, alpha, and beta. They will test for something that isn't showing up in large quantities in that area and then tell you it's safe because maybe they didn't find one particular radionuclei. Now, here's the way to describe this. If I was to hold this lighter like this and tell you that I was heating the room, that's not going to work very well. It's not. However, you can't say it's harmless because if I do this and put my hand over it without shutting the flame off, as I wisely just did, glad I didn't time that incorrectly, then you're going to burn your hand off. That is, thank you, Chris Busby, that is the analogy that holds up here. These particles may not be damaging you outside your skin, but you are breathing. You are, I promise. You're breathing it in. Once it's in you, now it's the hot flame on the hand. It's not the hot flame in the room anymore. That's one of the huge mistakes he's made. The other one, if you're reading Fat Cam behind me, is painfully obvious. Fukushima nuclear waste now being found all over the U.S. states. I mean, all over the e, e News, it's a Japanese site, and it's translated into English. So if it sounds choppy, I'm not drunk. Fukushima nuclear waste now being found in all U.S. states on the West Coast, detected near shorelines of California, Oregon, Washington, and Alaska this summer. Highest radiation just miles from San Francisco. Two important things there. First of all, I told you, do not live on the West Coast of California, Washington, Oregon, Alaska, or Hawaii. Now, the jet stream has moved the radiation in, in such a pattern that for a while, Oregon and parts of Washington and parts of Alaska were being spared. Now, here's the analogy I'm going to use for that. I've got these little scraps of paper here. I need to see myself for a second. I've got these little scraps of paper. And the jet stream is throwing them this way. And these are radioactive isotopes that I'm throwing over here. Now, it's not affecting this side of the room. But at some point, we're going to open the window that you can't see off camera on the other side of the backdrop. And that's going to blow all these papers over here. Well, many of the radioactive isotopes have a half-life, which means they're dangerous for up to millions of years. It's going to move over there in a matter of years. All these little pieces of paper just going to slowly blow every time you open that. And then at some point, Costello's going to open the door to the studio, which you can't see. And that's going to blow the papers back this way again, recontaminating the entire area that it passes over. So, I mean, this doctor got his life threatened. That shouldn't have happened. But, I, I mean, you can see where the rage and the anger had come from. So, what are the levels that we're looking at here? Well, how do we know it's in Fukushima? In the aftermath of the 11th tsunami off Japan, the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant released cesium-134 and other radioactive elements into the ocean at unprecedented levels. Since then, the radioactive plume has traveled west across the Pacific Ocean from Japan. So any cesium-134 detected in the ocean today must have come from Fukushima. We expect samples from the surface waters of the western Pacific that have not contaminated by the Fukushima source have been uh, 137 cesium and between 1 to 2 becquerels of uh, 134 cesium. Well, if it's safe to be around 1 to 2 becquerels, and keep in mind, a becquerel is a, a tiny nuclear explosion that happens inside your body, and a radioisotope will explode 
And if it triggers another cell to deform, we'll lead to cancer in many instances. One to two is safe, right? Total cesium in California's coast, 4.7. The highest concentration in the country. Sorry, David Lake, get the hell out of there, is San Francisco. Show brought to you by StickerJunkie.com. Um, Oregon coast. This is August 19th. My dearly departed mom's birthday. 3.4 back rolls. That's not between two to four. Not when I went to school. Washington coast. Remember Washington wasn't getting juice? 3.9. Alaska coast near Canada. 2.14. Mark my words. Unfortunately, that's going to go up due to the analogy I gave you with the paper when I destroyed and trashed my otherwise mostly clean studio. Just for you. Um, this matters here because they're using the lie of man-made global warming. Man is not warming the planet. Look up Climate Gate. Look up Lord Moncton. Well, there's more science here that I'm about to give you. This is from NASA that shows that we are not losing ice in Antarctic. It is growing at rates that we've never seen before. If we're not warming the planet, then that's one less reason to use nuclear technology. And again, uh, for those of you that, for whatever reason, continue to buy into this madness, but are still anti-nuke, we're all on the same page here. But you've at least got to look at the science on this. NASA study, uh, mass gains of Antarctic ice sheet greater than the losses. So Al Gore in his uh, great movie, so to speak, which was terrible, polar bears can't swim. Um... He was wrong. Research challenges conclusions of other studies, including the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change 2013 report. And it says that Antarctica is overall losing land ice. Well, it is not. Listen, this is NASA.gov. Who's your opinion? NASA. A new NASA study says that an increase in Antarctic snow accumulation that began 10,000 years ago is currently adding enough ice to the continent to outweigh the increased losses from its thinning glaciers. The research challenges the conclusions of other studies, and I told you where from. According to the new analysis of satellite data, the Antarctic ice sheet showed a net gain of 112 billion tons of ice from 92 to 01. That net gain slowed to 82 billion tons per ice between 03 and 08. We're essentially in agreement with other studies that show an increase in ice discharge in the Antarctic Peninsula and the Thwaites and Pine Island region. He said, uh, our main disagreement with the East Antarctica and the interior of West Antarctica, there we see an ice gain that exceeds the losses that are in other areas. In other words, as many people have said, the planetary shift has caused much of this. Also remember that Fu Fukushima actually caused the Earth to, uh, to rotate differently as well. It made mildly uh, altered the uh, axis of the Earth. Um, more ice than ever, friends. More ice than ever. It said at the end of the Ice Age, the air became warmer. It was nothing to do with man. And now we're seeing it go back exactly like you would expect to see if man was not warming the planet. And they're not. Uh, guys, that's the uh, Fukushima part of it. Don't go away. Don't leave because I'm going to give you a whole bunch of nuke news from everyone else in the world. Uh, North Korea, we've got uh, Russia. Nuclear issues that are going to matter because of the amount of damage that can be done if these things go badly. I just want to let everybody know, you can see on fat cam back here as I finish these pictures of abandoned Fukushima. Again, this was somebody's house. This was somebody's city. This was somebody's whole world. This is what uh, Fukushima brought to them. All right, see the sticker here on fat cam. That is uh, stickerjunkie.com. Owned by David Lake. And if you want some of the best stickers that you've ever had, go ahead and get all the sticker junkie. When you go into the search engine, type in correct views. And you're going to get a discount. And why? Because he's a sponsor of the show. And you're going to be delighted that you went there. Because you've never seen better stickers. High quality, durable. I live in Ohio. It's always snowing. They hold up remarkably. 
Also, friends, make up, make sure you look up Mike McLaughlin, M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. He is a, a writer. You can find him on Facebook. Poet, writer, uh, political commentator. He does a lot of things very well. I think he's finished his vampire story. And you're going to want to hop on there and let Mike McLaughlin on Facebook know you heard about him on the correct views. Uh, friends, Vladimir Putin orders Russia's security council to stockpile nuclear protective equipment. Now, at first, it sounds like this is uh, more of the escalation of the Cold War rhetoric. And I didn't really read a whole lot into it. However, the because you, many of you know that Russia and America aren't particularly getting along that great. I'm not going to go ahead and go into that side of it. I've done it many times on the show so far, and the Fukushima listeners uh, don't always uh, tune in for that. But the important part of it's coming up here in terms of the of the uh, Fukushima update. Let me find exactly where this paragraph is. During his address, and this is on independent.co.uk, Putin used the example of the Fukushima nuclear power plant disaster in Japan to illustrate the need for new defenses. He also said that Moscow should be wary about the safety of nuclear power plants and businesses that handle toxic chemicals and make sure that they follow updated procedures to avoid accidents. Um, According to the country's state nuclear agency, Rosatom, Russia has 10 nuclear power plants. Well, Vladimir Putin, and this one is perfectly correct, I've had issues with him on things prior, but yes, um, he knows that it's a matter of time before it happens again. He knows that Japan didn't handle it well, and he knows that uh, Chernobyl could have been handled better back probably when he was a CIA agent. But they're still dealing with it. They still have to build the Sagafki over and over again and re refortify that structure in Russia that melted down in 86. And he's preparing for some of that because he knows, he can see the writing on the wall. <clears throat> the world is extending, I'm dying of thirst. The world is extending these lifespans of these nuclear power plants. It's going to lead to more and more meltdowns. And now you've got countries admitting major countries like Russia admitting that there's not so much on their plate with Syria and the U.S. and all that. There's not so much on their plate that he doesn't want to prepare for something like that. And I think that's that tells volumes, and speaks volumes. He's a very busy man right now, and yet nuclear power plants are on his radar of things that need to be addressed and worried about. I'm going to listen to this. In the case of a meltdown, elite preparing to Isaac insulate from the revolution, rebellion, and anarchy after an economic collapse. Well, it also goes on to mention nuclear disasters here. Let me do a quick control F. Um, Vincino uh, owns a place that uh, uh, caters to the 1% who would want to get away. Listen to this. They're going to Patagonia. And this is on Prison Planet. They're going to Patagonia. They're going to remote locations of the world, he says. Their reasoning is more to be insulated from a revolution, rebellion, anarchy, or whatever following an economic collapse. Vincino's properties include the recently launched Vivos Europa One, an invitation-only nuclear blast-proof subterranean complex tucked into the former Cold War munitions storage facility in Germany. Well, isn't that interesting? I bet you thought Dr. Strangelove was fake. I bet you thought uh, the day after was fake. Well, it's not. It was purchased by Vicino and his partner, a German developer, for $2.25 million and unveiled this past summer. The property, now valued at over a billion dollars and boasting 227,904 square feet of secure, blast-proof living areas, living areas big enough for 34 high net worth families to inhabit for a four year high net worth money they're going to live through it just fine they're going to be in caviar they can enjoy swimming pools a wine cellar living quarters they are encouraged to customize with fittings created by their favorite yacht designers oh buffy our yacht worried about the collapse of the rule of law after the end of society each of the v vivo's properties will be governed by its own bylaws, and the various bunkers will have their own tribunals to handle conflicts between wealthy residents. There's that word again. 
who may well get twitchy during their confinement. An armed security force employed by the company will handle threats from above, presumably the have-nots who want to get in. Do you believe that we're living in a world where people, and you're going to want to read the whole article that goes on about how, how they, they prep for everything, but you're considered a lunatic if you do it. Um, we live in a world where the elite are going to hole away like rats because of the nuclear threat rather than eliminate the nuclear threat from our lives. It's a mess. Um, I'm going to get to this quickly because you would think it doesn't have anything to do with it, but it does. Economic collapse, Michael Snyder. Moving toward a one-world government, a one-world economy, and a one-world religion. Well, why does that matter? Why is that in the Fukushima update? The United Nations is promising that if we all work together, that we can turn our planet into some kind of utopia. And one of the things they talk about all the time is sustainable development. They want a one world government under the UN. And the UN is pushing global warming. What's the solution among many to global warming? Well, it's what makes them the most money, of course. It's nuclear power plant construction. And you, you can read the whole article about how we're merging in that direction. I'm just putting it up for a source so that people can't say I'm not giving sources. Point is, the UN is going to lead to the construction and continuation of existing nuclear power plants. More and more and more. Why would that matter? I can tell you why. How about this? Manhattan Project Fallout. <coughs> St. Louis nuclear legacy unravels. Nuclear waste secretly dumped in the suburbs. And you would think, oh no, that can't happen. Of course it can happen. It's happening right here. And there's virtually nobody talking about it, nobody concerned about it. You're not reading about it on the news. You're not uh, hearing about it on your networks. Well, why is that? Because it looks like it might matter to you if you live in St. Louis. Residents of St. Louis, Missouri are only being, beginning to see the symptoms of years of living among radioactive material. It was revealed that nuclear waste was secretly dumped in the suburbs under a cloak of national security following the Cold War, and now the EPA is trying to downplay the potential catastrophe that smolders underneath the surface. There is a fire under the ground that is going to worsen the already existing issues that have come to be due to the nuclear waste site being there. And why is there a nuclear waste site being there? Because they, they wanted to do bomb testing technology. Do you realize that America had already won the war? They didn't need to bomb Japan. Japan was already willing to surrender, and we didn't let them. Do you realize that? Do you realize that the Japanese newspaper, the matter of public record, said they were going to bomb America? Pearl Harbor, Pearl Harbor wasn't a surprise. The Japanese, in their newspaper, printed that they were going to bomb the country. It was about power and wielding might during the beginning of the Cold War. Remember that uh, Russia and America didn't like each other in World War II. They just banded together against Hitler. Stalin was every bit as evil as Hitler. Well, the, the fallout from that is now killing people in St. Louis in 2015. Now, speaking of threatening to bomb somebody, let's get our nuclear music here, Meat Feet Manifesto nuclear bomb. Oh! North Korean music. North Korea asks us for a peace treaty, but the U.S. has no interest. Well, when I first read this, I wondered why. And I don't know that uh, I would have handled this the way that uh, Obama is, because I agree with... Uh, I agree with Ronald Reagan, you can't not talk to your enemies, but at the same time, you can't trust anything uh, this crazy tin horn dictator says. Um, this is in the Korea Times, Brian Hahn. North Korea expressed a desire to pursue a peace treaty with the U.S. It also wants to be able to freely pursue its nuclear weapons development program simultaneously. Oh, that's a great idea. That sounds like the agreement that Hitler made with, uh, oh, what's that guy that was on before, the, the, the chancellor before um, Churchill? 
yeah, I'll leave it in my comment line. You guys know who I mean. He, he got peace with Hitler and then promptly got bombed. Um, for the U.S., the two primary terms of the proposal are mutually exclusive. In other words, North Korea cannot have its cake and eat it too. But the communist country gave it a shot, which was immediately rejected on Tuesday by Special Envoy for North Korea Policy, Sung Kim, who spoke on behalf of the U.S. With regard to the North Korea statement suggesting that we enter into peace treaty discussions, we have no interest in entering into such discussions, he said at the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, according to the Yanha. For us, the priority focus has to be the nuclear issue. As they often do, I'm afraid the North Koreans have their priorities wrong by suggesting that we sort of jump some steps, some very important steps, and start peace treaty negotiate, negotiations. Well, I mean, you would want to say, you know what? Nothing is off the table, but we are willing to speak with you. We were going to speak about everything, including nuke issues. If Obama had been wise enough to word it that way, then there could have been um, dialogue, at least between the two nations, even if it fell apart. Even the Arabs and the Jews make a few stabs at this now and again. But of course, we have the worst president ever. So he plays his ace card and just refuses to talk to him when, you know, I, I get the feeling that Kim, this Kim dynasty, they're not all that bright. It wouldn't take that much to placate them and play them down for a while until the regime just eats itself from the inside out. But that's what a diplomat would do. That's what somebody with a little bit of speaking skill would do. We don't have anybody like that. We got Obama. Makes me sick. Part of the issue is that the denuclearization is the top priority for the administration in regards to anything related to North Korea. Unfortunately, it seems almost impossible to get them to even consider a dialogue on the topic. And frankly, at the moment, we can't even get the North Koreans, as you've mentioned before, a ministry statement. We can't even get North Koreans to focus on denuclearization as a goal. So that's why they've resumed negotiations. We well, have to remember that, I mean, obviously it's evil, but you don't, you can't expect uh, Kim to give up his power and admit to his people that they're not going to use their nuclear bombs because, or that they're not going to have a nuclear bomb program because that is a, and it has been for the last four or five years, a symbol of might to the people. There's no way they can just immediately backtrack from that without the regime crashing. And of course we want the regime to crash. But Obama should have been wise enough to have at least talked to him. Don't give him anything. Talk to him. Make him think you're his friend. The longer we can get them to not throw nukes around the world, the faster the system will collapse. Because I don't think it has a lot of time left. So, I mean, it shouldn't have been that complicated. Leanne McAdoo, InfoWars. Nuclear waste turned into a trendy terrorist attraction. That brings us to the last two stories. The Dumdies of the Day. Let's get our Dumdie music. Oh, yes. InfoWars reporter Leanne McAdoo is in Weldon Springs, Missouri, just outside St. Louis, where the nuclear waste disposal cell that I told you about has been transformed into a tourist attraction. A tourist attraction, friends. That's right. A tourist attraction. Who wants the tour where you can get yourself a nice cancer, get yourself a nice damaged heart? Visitors are encouraged to climb the 75-foot mound of rocks, encapsulating abandoned radioactive radium, uranium, and other dangerous materials. If you don't know what those materials are, they're the materials that were in the bomb fallout that killed John Wayne. Killing John Wayne was the equivalent of killing, uh, um, God forbid, uh, Chuck Norris. He was the Chuck Norris of his time. Our government killed him with nuclear bomb tests, and that's some of the radioisotopes that were in it. The very ones. That is the Manhattan Project. I'm not being figurative, I mean those very bombs. So the the waste that made those bombs are now a tourist attraction. And that brings us to the other dumb deal of the day. It's tied to it. Special report, landfill fire rages toward radioactive waste. The hot spot near the waste is St. Louis and the residents are on edge. I bet they are. 
uh, there is a fire, a simmering underground fire is only a thousand feet away and is creeping closer to the nuclear waste that was left over from the Cold War. It's been burning for years. That, friends, is your massive Fukushima update. Thank you for tuning in. Hey, do me a favor. Go to the correct views at Hotmail.com. Every penny you donate to me goes towards a better show. Share this video. That's a massive help when you do that. Also, make sure you go to the Mediaspeaks.com and look up the work of Kyle Court, D-Lake, and myself. We're posting all the time. And uh, go to the, you can find uh, all of them, too, their newest videos. We do Saturday editions at 2 p.m. So check them out. And I'm going to do a Mark Dice. Look up Sam DeGange on Amazon and Kindle. Sleep Unknowing, Lucky, Lucky Leprechaun, and Arisen, The Historicity of the Resurrection of Jesus Christ. I've posted all of them, and they're for sale. Good night, friends. God bless.